Hey ladies and gentlemen, it's Brendan O'Connell, the Bell Tower Boy, coming to you from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. It is Monday the 29th of January. Today we're going to be talking about Israel and how it rules. It rules because of the Telpiot program, the specific high technology program started in the late 1970s, which was to put Israeli military intelligence officers in high positions of corporate power and to dominate the high technology sector. And this is why you see people like Benjamin Netanyahu, who can slaughter at will and still be welcomed into countries, doing contracts galore all over the world. Why the Telpiot program? They dominate the high technology world, databases, encrypted communications, government, military, it doesn't matter, civilian, corporate world. It doesn't matter, they literally control everything. This is just a quick introduction. I'm here in front of the Patronus Twin Towers, a big landmark in Kuala Lumpur, of course, a very modern metropolis, a very modern metropolis. It's a dissident paradise. Ladies and gentlemen, you must understand the Telpiot program and its importance and the domination of Israel of the high technology. It doesn't need a nuclear weapon because the nuclear weapon is their ability to switch off your infrastructure. And in closing, before we get into the video, a nice 15 minute short one, just remember the two spectre and meltdown bugs that were flaws found in Intel CPUs. That was deliberate flaws put in by the Israeli state in their very nice, highly sophisticated CPU fabrication factory, where it designs and manufactures the latest Intel CPUs. They put those bugs in so that they would have access to the world's databases and the world's high technology sector infrastructure, which is hooked into the internet. They did it, and Netanyahu deliberately released that information. And we should very much wonder about Assange and Snowden. I don't know their real story. I'm not saying they're plants, but what they've done a lot of is to scare people, particularly Snowden, and to let people know we are watching. You better watch what you say and what you do. And you combine that with Intel CPU flaws, which are so incredibly important to understand. You understand why Netanyahu released that information. He's saying, you better shut your mouth to the corporate world, to the government world, because we've kill switched you. Ladies and gentlemen, short 15 minutes, the Topio program. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and please donate. And please go to my Patreon account where I really want to focus my efforts. Thanks again to everyone who supported me. You know who you are. We're working on some really good programs. And thanks too to my new camera assistant. I'm not going to name him at this moment, but I have a local Malaysian friend now who's assisting me. And this is wonderful news. And we're networking now with local Malays. And we hope to be translating uh, these videos into Bahasi Maliu. Thanks for watching. Ciao for now, hold the affairs, and I'll speak to you very soon. Telpiot program. Watch, subscribe, donate. Thank you. My heart beat quickly. This was the last place I wanted to be. The tent was dark, lit only by flickering candles in colourful glass lamps from the Orient. Thieves made deals in shadowed corners, and tinkers traded their deadly creations for illicitly one coin. Uh, the company Intel is now opening its biggest plant outside of the United States, and this one is going to be in Israel. The plant is set to produce the world's most advanced computer microprocessor. We all seem to have these in our computers. Oh, heady days, young, dumb, and full of rum, barley bound. My biggest concern was if a light easterly breeze would smooth out the water for my morning surf. Computing woes in the olden days were limited to the mother virus, where your mother removed the power cord to your VIC-20 or Commodore 64 in the vain hope you would do your homework. In those heady days of the early 1980s, we pondered the raw power of 64 kilobits of memory, then moving on from a data cassette to a five and a quarter inch floppy, then a 386DX 33 megahertz machine to a 486, then a Pentium processor model all the way up to the standard 4,000 megahertz and beyond we now take for granted. Yes, these were carefree, innocent days. There was no such thing as a computer virus for ordinary folk. Assange and his friends were still wankworming the Pentagon and NASA at that stage, allegedly. Now the entire world is hooking up to the Internet of Things, from self-driving cars to smart light bulbs to smartphones to robot milking machines and medical nanotechnology. And who has made themselves indispensable in the field of cybersecurity against the emerging threat of bringing the world's new critical and non-critical infrastructure to its knees?
Maybe you can go back and tell me how you three guys got together and came up with this crazy idea. A couple of years after all of us uh, were discharged from the military, we just each went his own way, and at some point we realized, okay, we we are pretty bored with what we do today. We kept thinking uh, that we want to do something uh, special, right? Uh, something different. So we started looking at different areas until we learned about the world of connected cars. Cars are way more computerized than we realize. You have dozens of different computers in each vehicle. Almost everything you can imagine is somehow controlled by a computer. In the recent years, it became almost a trend to connect vehicles to the internet. And once you take such a complicated machine that has so much software in it and so many computers and you connect it to the internet, you have a serious problem. So how do you guys know how to do all this stuff? The three of us served together in the military in Unit 8200. In the 8200 unit? We have served for six years together in the 8200 intelligence unit. Unit H200 is the backbone of the Israeli intelligence community and it's also a hotbed for Israeli ITEC. In recent years, when the name of the game is cyber, offensive cyber, defensive cyber, Unit A200 is there among the top four or five leaders in the world. The exact comparison is to US NSA to British General Communication Headquarters. Hello. Unit 8200. Hmm. An Israeli military intelligence program. And these graduates of the Israeli Defense Force now come to your corporate HQ to assist you in keeping the bad guys out. But what if the guys trying to get in are the same guys who just came to your IT department? We all know the old gangster scam, start a window repair business, pay people to break windows. I put to you, this is exactly what Israel has done. The world of cyber security is totally dominated by Israel. But even more than Unit 8200 is the other military program a few knew about till very recently, and few talk about to this day, the Telpiot program. This is a vastly different program to Unit 8200. This is a program that has been operating for over 30 years. A program that creates large corporate entities that now dominate the world's IT sector. The Telpiot program is an elite Israeli Defense Force training program. The recruits have to demonstrate outstanding academic ability in the sciences and show great leadership potential. Graduates of the Telpiot program pursue double majors in higher education while also serving in the army. They then utilize their experience to further Israeli Defense Force research and development in technological leadership positions. The program was inaugurated in 1979. The initiators of the program were Professor Felix Dothan and Professor Shul Ratziv of the Hebrew University. They submitted the idea to the Israeli Chief of Staff, Raphael Ethan. Mr. Ethan is also a good friend, or was a good friend, of Bibi Netanyahu. The idea was to harness human creativity to develop new technologies for the Army. The program is sponsored by the Israeli Air Force and Israeli Defense Force Administration for the Development of Weapons and the Technological Industry. It is run directly under the auspices of the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. In addition to the three years obligated by Israeli law, military service includes six years of standing army service in a wide variety of positions. The total program, including military service, is nine long years. These graduates go on to own and create and run their own companies. Many end up as the heads of corporations such as Microsoft in Israel. Perhaps to really understand the power of Telpiot in as short a time as possible, we should study one man, Zohar Zisipel, and one company, Rad Group. Zisipel was one of the original graduates of the Telpiot program. When I found this Information Underground article on a forum in 2007, I also found this BDS article on Telpiot. 
Now let's understand and grasp the foundational importance of the Telpiot program from this short article in an online Israeli journal, Israel 21C. This was originally published in 2009 on another website. The article by Karen Klusterman disappeared after I made Telpiot known in court documents at the time I was speaking to members of the West Australian Counterterrorism on this particular issue. The website and most of the limited public writing on Telpiot and its graduates was removed, totally, except for that BDS article. I would also add with regards to this issue that I am the only human being on the planet who has had the Israeli state name them directly as the reason for a Friends of Israel rally held eight days before the start of a high-profile trial on August the 8th, 2010. This Friends of Israel rally took place in Perth, Western Australia. Perhaps the Israeli ambassador Yuval Rotham, Israeli Deputy Defence Minister Danny Aylon, Australian Foreign Minister Stephen Smith and 135 local and federal members of the Australian Parliament were concerned about something. Head of State Counterterrorism Barry Shelton had emailed me, quote, We all respect your work, and invited me for a coffee two months before the rally was arranged. I wonder what we were going to talk about. Let me put what happened in the context of a Californian man going through the same eight-year torture process will convert population differences between Western Australia, 2.7 million people, and California, 40 million people, into an equivalent number to make the point. Imagine Bill Smith, a native of Los Angeles, California, met an American Jewish guy who had served in the Israeli Defense Force. Imagine if this guy, we'll call him Leon Wend, had high security clearances and was installing the weapons and sensor systems on the brand new Sea Wolf class US Navy attack submarine. Imagine if Leon Wend had been showing publicly hundreds of photos and video of the interior of this highly classified sub years before any material had been released to the public. Imagine if Bill Smith made a complaint about a security breach to American authorities. Then, imagine if Bill Smith wrote about Leon Wend and his sudden move to the Israeli company Variant, a company that specializes in critical infrastructure security and data intercepts for law enforcement agencies. Now we find Leon is installing CCTV security on the Los Angeles Public Transport Network just after the same company, Variant, had installed the same equipment in the London Tube just before the bombing in 2005. Now imagine Leon Wen makes a complaint to the Los Angeles FBI that Bill Smith was stalking him by naming him online, and Bill Smith is interviewed by counterterrorism police. Imagine, on hearing the details of Mr. Wend and the security risk he poses, the Los Angeles FBI field office tell Mr. Bill Smith to be quiet and they would investigate. Imagine, a year or so later, Mr. Smith attends a rally in support of the Palestinians and calls a hardcore Jewish Zionist activist a, quote, racist Jew, with a, quote, religion of racism, hate, homicide and ethnic cleansing. Mr. Smith then ends up charged for racially vilifying that man, Stanley Elliot Keezer, and is further charged for incitement for making extremely banal comments about Jewish power you could hear at a Professor Norman Finkelstein meeting. Imagine if Bill Smith tells police if they continue with the ridiculous charges he will be raising matters of national security at the trial. Imagine a full-blown harassment campaign begins against Mr. Bill Smith and his friends and family. Imagine there are four suspicious deaths, including his sister. Imagine the head of Californian state counterterrorism invites Bill Smith out for coffee to discuss Israeli intelligence activity, and he emails on his official police email, We all respect your work. Imagine a few months later, a rally to support the Israeli state is organized, and the Israeli ambassador to the US is there in person. The Israeli Deputy Foreign Minister is there via video link. The US Secretary of State is there in person. A hundred members of Congress and the Senate are there in person. And almost the entire US political class write letters of support for the event. And 26,000 Christians and Jews from all over the US attend the event in person. A keynote speaker is the man who brought the hate speech charges against Bill Smith, Stanley Elliott Keezer. 
And this friend of Israel rally is reported on by the local Jewish online journal as being directly organised in response to Mr. Bill Smith. Not only is this an obvious attempt to intimidate the state, political, judicial and legal class, it is a giant international incident and violation of state-to-state relations, but you'd never know it because despite reporting the event in the local newspaper and recording footage of the event itself for all to see, no media outlet will touch it. Not even Iran Press TV, even though their senior international correspondent swore black and blue he was waiting on funding for the story. Funding that never came, but they strung me along for two long years. Of course, Bill Smith is me, Brendan Lee O'Connell. I hope this little sideline exemplifies the point that understanding the Talpiot program is the key to understanding Israel's continuing success. Now, getting back to the main game. Here is journalist Karen Klusterman writing about Zisipel and Red Group. I'm going to read its important sections and make comment along the way. Remember, Rad Group is one of hundreds of Israeli high technology startups, some big, some really big, and some small, but all come together to make Israel a quote, technology juggernaut. Their words, not mine. Here's the article. I don't like big organizations, says Zohar Zisipel, the co-founder and chairman of Rad Data Communications one of Israel's most successful group of companies. Rumour has it that one of Israel's most successful entrepreneurs wears sandals and jeans to work and flies economy class. The sandals part is true, he tells Israel 21C, but he no longer flies economy. I did it for many years, says Zisipel, who has earned millions through the 27 high-tech startups he's created with his brother Yehuda in as many years. People told me it was too arrogant. Lauded by entrepreneurs as one of the most successful and prolific high-tech entrepreneurs in Israel or anywhere, especially in the telecom industry, Zisipel humbly says if it weren't them, someone else would have created the technologies developed by RAD and its group of companies. Six RAD group companies now listed on NASDAQ include RADvision, Ceragon Networks, RADware, RIT Technologies, RADcom and Silicom. RAD has helped change life as we know it, enabling high-speed wireless communication and secure telephone networks and banking. Today, RAD is a solutions provider for more than 100 telecom operators around the world, including AT&T, British Telecom, Deutsche Telekom, France Telecom, Japan Telecom and Orange France. It provides communication tools to major players in the banking, commerce, education, finance, government, military, transportation and utility sectors. We were part of a trend, says Zisipel. We were lucky to be starting in the beginning of the 80s when Israel was still a very socialist country. In the beginning, he admits, it was hard to change the world's image of Israel from a predominantly agricultural exporter to one that has fashioned, at the time, the smallest modem on the planet. When Zisipel went to develop the business abroad, people said, we're buying oranges, not modems, he recalls. Could life be different without us? I don't think any company can claim that, says Zisipel, not even Google or Microsoft. He gives the comparison of art and applies it to high tech. There are those who do it first. When you do something first, you'll have others following you. Born in Tel Aviv in 1949, Zisipel's father, an immigrant from Poland, was a shoe salesman. Before becoming the head of the Electronic Research Department of the Ministry of Defense in Tel Aviv, Zisipel had studied at the Technion, the Israel Institute of Technology, for two degrees, then went on to Tel Aviv University for an MBA. In 1981, he quit the Ministry of Defense and started RAD from the back offices of Binet, a company his brother had started. Zohar's first assignment at RAD was to manage the development of the company's first product, a mini modem that would change the computer industry. He and his brother Yehudi were always and still are very much a team in their entrepreneurial activities. In Israel, where everyone and his brother vie to build a high-tech company, Zisipel laughs because it actually happened. Me and my brother, we are totally different. The fact is, we are compatible because we stayed together for so many years, are together today, and we'll be together in the future. We have very different strengths and weaknesses. Today, RAD has blossomed into 27 companies, 
over the 27 years that the brothers have been working together. The group, which employs 3,500 people globally, has been called, quote, the world's most successful incubator of telecom-related startups by Business 2.0 magazine. The idea comes first, then we start looking for people, says Isipel, who usually looks at a pool of Israeli developers or ones in the US who are interested in coming back to Israel for work. We've done 27 companies in 27 years. In good times, in bad times, the rate stays the same, says Isipel, about one a year. Once a year, because we cannot do it faster, he adds. End of article. Did I just read that right? 27 companies in 27 years. Count them. That's one Israeli corporate entity. One. Israel now leads the world in high technology of every kind. From CPUs to medical nanotechnology, cybersecurity, encryption technologies telecommunications, cryptocurrencies, billing services, databases for banking and financial security systems, military high technology systems of every kind, robotics in agriculture, robotics in general, water supply systems, food production and distribution, critical infrastructure security, and the emerging terror of artificial intelligence. It would be far easier to ask ourselves what the Israeli high-tech sector doesn't control or dominate. While Detroit and other US cities fall into disrepair, Tel Aviv booms. Now where did they get the money for that? And what's more, where did they get the technology for that? There is no way to effectively boycott Israel. Every country on the planet is signing high technology deals with this technology juggernaut. Technology that Israel has stolen straight out from the United States. Technology that can switch off any country's critical infrastructure and bring its economy to its knees. Israel does not need nuclear weapons in the classic sense. It has the ultimate nuke. Control of the emerging Internet of Things and the Internet in general. And nothing is safe. From your self-driving car, to your electricity grid, to your bank accounts, to your water supply, to your food and food distribution systems, in hackerspeak, Israel has you pwned. With Israel's domination of cybersecurity, we also find Zionist-run American companies like IMA Financial Services. Let's explain the multi-dimensional scam, but let's hear from Rob Cohen, head of IMA first. <laughs> you know, it's always interesting this time of year when you can reflect and look back. And in many ways, business has been good this year. But if you, if you want to talk about bigger transformational things, um, the things that I'm most proud of is our investment in technology and data intelligence um, so that we can change the value proposition for our customers and use information in new and different ways. I think change has always been a constant, but what is changing is technology and data is giving us insight in ways that we didn't have access to information in the past. And we as humans are having a hard time adapting to the speed of the change. Our industry, by nature of the business that we're in, we have access to more data than probably most industries have. IMA ensures corporations against cyber attack. They are also intimately involved with Israel and some unusual happenings in Colorado. I'm Eric Singer, Gazette.com, and this is Between the Lines, a one-two punch of great economic news for Colorado Springs just this week. First, we've learned, of course, that Frontier is coming back to the Colorado Springs Airport, resuming service. And now we've learned the National Cyber Intelligence Agency is coming here to Colorado Springs. Joining us now to put the center in perspective is Gazette reporter Wayne Heilman. So explain it to us. First, what is the National Cyber Intelligence Agency Center? The National Cyber Intelligence Center includes three elements. There's a rapid response center that's designed to help companies cope with and recover from cyber attacks. There's also a institute that is designed to train public officials and bureaucrats uh, about cyber threats. And then lastly, there's a research center that will, that will delve into cyber threats. How many people will be employed? About 100 people. 
Uh, it'll be located on the, uh, in a building owned by UCCS that now houses the Mortgage Solutions Financial Expo Center. It'll occupy the, un the part of the building that is currently empty, and uh, it will cost about eight, uh, $15 to $20 million to renovate that building. The governor is going to ask the state legislature for about $8 million of state money. They're going to raise the rest from industry and foundations. And this center is also an economic magnet for other businesses, too. The governor believes many businesses will want to locate close to this center and close to the uh, other assets, uh, cyber assets that are located in the Colorado Springs area. There are many military uh, facilities mm -hmm. that having to do with cyber and about 70-some uh, uh, businesses in the cyber arena. Wow. Thanks for putting it all in perspective. And of course, you can read Wayne's full story in the Gazette and on Gazette.com. With Between the Lines, I'm Eric Singer, Gazette.com. Colorado is the former home of American Zionist Jew Daniel Lewin, graduate of the Telpiot program and founder of Akamai, the company that runs and controls the internet data load, a critical system that keeps the internet functioning. In fact, it's the system. Daniel was also the first man to die on 9-11, allegedly. One of the great mysteries of 9-11 yet to be explained in any meaningful way. Also, with IMA in Colorado, we find Stephen Waldman, member of the oldest synagogue in the U.S., Congregation Shireth Israel. Now, I found this very interesting. Founded in 1654 by Spanish and Portuguese Jews, they have a nice APAC sign at the bottom of their page. I assure you, go and have a dig. There's way more to find there. Denver, Colorado was also the home of Eric Mitisek, former Denver, Colorado Chief Innovation Officer and now manager of an IMA subsidiary called IM Analytics. In this article, Mitisek explains his new role. Here's a quote. Few details were shared about the new IMA venture but the new business will be part of the insure tech industry, which uses technology to maximize the insurance industry. Midisec, who starts as president on August the 1st, will be responsible for leveraging vast amounts of information to create better experiences for IMA clients, the company said. America's new cybersecurity command will be going in where? Yeah, you guessed it. Colorado, home of the well-heeled Aspen Israeli first a crowd of Sheldon Adelson, Donald Trump's chief financier and controller. So let's summarize IMA and the massive influx of Israeli startups, graduates of the Telpiot program and Unit 8200 pouring into Colorado. It's pretty simple. Israel with Unit 8200 and a hundred private corporate graduates of that program like Black Cube, Harvey Weinstein's hackers of choice, whack the corporate military government IT network. Maybe East European or Chinese hackers get the blame. IMA comes along, expresses its sincere condolences for the loss of data, pays the insurance, or you buy insurance off them, and IMA organizes the cleanup specialist crew to come into your allegedly secure IT environment to advise and fix the damage. While they're there, they fill the target system with more malware, creating more business and sending more data to Israel. This is part way of how Israel rules. This is how Bibi gets what he wants. Every time. Time is short. Bibi needs a war. He needs a distraction while he gets greater Israel happening. Maybe Secretary of Defense Jim Mattis can help. He's sure the war on terror is over and the far more profitable and stable Cold War 2.0 can begin. So we will continue to prosecute the campaign against terrorists that we're engaged in today, but great power competition, not terrorism, is now the primary focus of U.S. national security. This strategy is fit for our time, providing the American people the military required to protect our way of life, stand with our allies, and live up to our responsibility to pass intact to the next generation those freedoms that all of us enjoy here today. We face growing threats from revisionist powers as different as China and Russia are from each other, nations that do seek to create a world consistent with their authoritarian models, pursuing veto authority over other nations' economic, diplomatic, and security decisions. 
Perhaps Mad Dog Mattis will explain to the American public how its friend and ally Israel is providing these very two countries with stolen U.S. high technology and have even managed to put their own direct puppet president in the White House, Donald J. Trump. Now the Trump administration demand more constraints on Chinese trade. Guess who's taking up the slack? The problem is not China. They have 1.3 billion people to feed. The problem is Israel. China is happy to trade and play its part in world affairs. It is being used as a public whipping boy and Goldstein decoy. But then, if they all meet at Bilderberger, maybe that's a role it's happy to play while it builds ports and infrastructure in Israel. While Alex Jones convinces you North Korea and China are about to nuke your local 7-Eleven, Bibi will use Iran's build-up in Syria and Hezbollah's threat to attack Israel's own critical physical infrastructure as the excuse he needs to cut a swathe all the way to the west bank of the Euphrates and blood Rouhani's nose. Iran under the Rouhani presidency and the Shia militias he controls have kindly assisted in wiping out all organized Sunni resistance to Israel and the breakup of the Middle East is almost complete. Since the devastation of Iraq, there is no chance of pan-Arab nationalism threatening Israel's existence and greater Israel is a step closer. The Saudis have no choice but to cooperate. While Israel's armed forces are considered a joke by military analysts, killing kids in Gaza is hardly a tough fight. Their standoff high-tech capability cannot be matched by anyone in the region, not even Russia. A counterinsurgency against Hezbollah is one thing, but all-out regional war with the massive application of firepower combined with detailed intelligence is another. And now the US is directly in the region in sufficient numbers and with sufficient equipment to ably assist. There will be nothing left of Hezbollah and Iranian proxy forces in the region, short of a miracle. I'm not sure what that miracle is. Putin, the saviour, will do nothing except play Pontius Pilate and resupply the region with more Russian weapons. Iran was lured deep into the Middle East by Israel via Russia, and Putin and his best friend Bibi and Trump will stab Iran right in the back. Is there a good doctor in the house who can fix this Zionist bug? However, even with war, Iran will not be directly attacked. A strong Iran is required to justify the massive Israeli military high technology sector and create hatred and division among the Gulf states in a Sunni Shia dialectic. The United States also needs a dangerous and well-armed Russia and China to justify its stimulation via the Pentagon budget of its own high technology sector and vice versa. War is good business. The threat of war is good business. They don't know how else to keep the high technology sectors pumping along. They are all out of ideas. If I sound somehow I'm anti-Iranian, you're wrong. I'm anti-Rouhani and his policies currently. Any criticism of Iranian foreign policy always means you work for the Muslim Brotherhood, the Saudis, the Gulf States, whatever. I simply want some balance. There are too many Putin and Rouhani groupies out there. Way too many. Could we please have a little objective analysis? No one is innocent in the region. Everyone has blood on their hands. We need to try and have a balanced and objective analysis to step back and do our bit to promote peace in the region. With war being the major organizing principle of society and with fear the major control mechanism elites use to control local populations, a return to a simple and easy to manage Cold War 2.0 is a preferred option. Now the grassroots citizen online insurgency has been largely quelled by high technology online AI and real life movement control mechanisms and federal legislation. These could never have been put in place under the old Soviet era Cold War system. People would notice the Soviet style controls. But now the job is done. We can all forget the terrorist threat and settle into the comfortable and easy to manage terror of global thermonuclear war. New office renovation and paint job, same boss, same management method, you can go back to sleep. Until the Talmudic racist supremacist state of Israel's domination of the high technology sector, Internet of Things, critical infrastructure, cyber security, robotics, AI and 5G is exposed, we will be forever frustrated as BB cuts the throat of a Muslim child 
live on the television, and we all wonder how it is he gets away with it. Bribery and blackmail is part of it. The three T's sum it up. Talmud, Telpiot, Technology. Soon, Donald Trump will stand in the ruins of a Detroit industrial park and give you the good news. A joint Israeli-American technology park is to be built. The technology will be U.S. taxpayer funded, handed to Israel, then handed back to the U.S. And you will be grateful. You will have some jobs, and Donald Trump will be re-elected. As long as you know, BB and Cambridge Analytica's narrative is, support my man Trump, and I will produce jobs and a stable economy. Don't support my man Trump, then we have some Telpiot Unit 8200 critical infrastructure nukes for you, and that goes for anyone else who wants to take on Pax Judaica. With Bibi and his special forces gang who started all of the above mentioned programs, we will get only war. There will be no dialogue, no chance for peace between Muslim, Jew and Christian, atheist or communist, black or white, rich or poor, gay or straight, male or female, just war, polarization and the dialectic. Until exhausted, you will accept Bibi and the Sheldon Adelson man. No Messiah is coming. No powerful, badass leader on a white horse come to restore order to the Wild West. We want you, Shane. There's no going back from that. Right and wrong, it's a brand. A brand sticks. There's no going back. Now you run on home to your mother and tell her... Tell her everything's all right. And there aren't any more guns in the valley. not coming back and we're going to have to do it ourselves Rosa Parks woke up in the morning and refused to get to the back of the bus and change history and she never even had a smartphone if not now when if not me who here I am at my Muslim Brotherhood million dollar studio Infowars regular Joel Scouse and is upset I'm upsetting his narrative Help me and my friends keep upsetting Joel, Alex and Donald. Please donate, join Patreon and give me and my friends the resources we need to get the narrative out there that will hamper, or at least marginally disrupt, the total takeover of the United States by the neocon Zionists, Habad Lubavitch, Russian Jewish gangsters, drug traffickers and weapons traders. They are not all powerful. They can only operate in the dark. As Julian Assange is fond of saying... Lights on, rats out. Let's switch some lights on. Okay. This is about SAS Campbell Barracks, Leon Wind, Variant. Okay. Timothy, you told me that Variant does your local and national, uh, your local police intercepts. Well, yeah, and Israeli intelligence front. Yeah, I know you are, Tim. Fuck you, Tim. Okay.